Hi kids! Okay, let's sing our Bible verse, Isaiah 40 verse 8. The grass withers, do 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 do. The flower fades, do 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 do. But the word of God, do 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 do, will stand forever. The word of God, do 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 do, will stand forever, do 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 do. Isaiah 40, do 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 do, verse 8. Okay, awesome. Now let's pray before we have our Bible story. Father God, we thank you that you are a God who saves, that you are a God who loves and cares for your people, and that you are good and you have a good plan for us, Lord. We pray that we would learn much from our Bible story today, and that we would learn to obey you no matter what the cost. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so our story today is another one from when Judah was in captivity in Babylon. Now, if you remember from the beginning of June, we talked about all those kings who kept turning away from the one true God to worship false idols. Now, during King Jehoiakim's reign, you will remember that King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon had come and taken some of the treasures that were in the house of God and he had taken them back to his palace in Babylon. Now during that exact same time he also took some of God's people and among those people were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and also a man named Daniel. So these were some of God's people that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken. Now King Nebuchadnezzar's plan was this. He would take some of the young men that were in Judah and he'd take them back to Babylon. He'd teach them the ways of the Babylonians, what they did, what they said, how they ate, all the different things. And then he would have them as his own servants, soldiers, and slaves. So that was his plan for them. Now, while Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel were living in Babylon, the people around them, the Babylonians, as well as some of God's people who had been brought with them, were really shocked by their witness, by how they lived their lives. Because Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, they loved God. They cared about what God had to say the most. They wanted to serve Him alone, no matter what the cost. So this meant that a couple times during um, their training, they did things that the other people didn't do because they wanted to stay true and follow God. Now, one day, King Nebuchadnezzar built a massive golden statue. Now, this golden statue was 90 feet tall and about nine and a half feet wide. So I've tried to build a little golden statue here. Now, mine's taller than me, I'm not very tall, but you can imagine just how tall one would be if it was 90 feet tall. It was absolutely massive. And this was a golden idol. It was to worship King Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. He had built it for that reason. And so King Nebuchadnezzar said to his officials, he told them, why don't you all go and get all of the important people in Babylon? And why don't you bring them back here and we can celebrate this big statue that I've made. So the officials went and they gathered all of the important people. A massive crowd was there, absolutely huge. Now King Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, listen, when we play the music, everyone here has to fall on their knees and worship the golden statue that I've made. So when the music played and they started to play the music, the tambourines and clash their cymbals, every single person in the crowd bowed down, except guess who was there? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they did not bow down because they knew that what King Nebuchadnezzar was asking them to do was wrong. They knew that only the one true God deserved their worship. And so they refused to bow down to the statue. Now, what King Nebuchadnezzar had done, not only had he said, everyone has to bow down, when the music plays, he'd also made a threat with that. He'd also said, if you don't bow down, you are going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. You're gonna be thrown your whole self in there and you're going to die, because that's what would happen if you were thrown into a fiery furnace. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew the cost of what they were doing, and yet they stayed standing. Now, some of the Babylonians saw 
what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were doing. There was this huge crowd. Everyone was bowing except for those three. Now they went to King Nebuchadnezzar and they said, O oh, king, you know what? Here, let me just read to you what they said from the Bible. They said, these men, O oh, king, they pay you no attention. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They go to King Nebuchadnezzar and they go, they're not listening to you. They don't like you. They don't listen to what you say. And this would have been a big deal back then because if you didn't listen to your king or do what your king said, it, mean that you, it meant that you were betraying the king and your whole country. And so they were saying to the king, they're not listening to you. Everyone else is listening to you. They're not. So King Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He was so angry. He had made this amazing golden statue and they refused to worship it. So he calls Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to him. And he goes, is this true? Is this true that when they play the music that you won't bow down? You know what I said would happen if you don't bow down. You're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And this is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered him. They said, if this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. So they're saying, if you're going to throw us in there, our God is able to save us. He is powerful and mighty, and he can do that. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They're saying, listen. If you want to throw us into the fiery furnace, we know that our God can save us. He's powerful. He can save us. But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we will still not do what you're asking us to do because it is wrong and only the one true God deserves our worship. King Nebuchadnezzar got even angrier and he had his soldiers stoke the burning fiery furnace. Here's the fiery furnace and they made it even hotter. They had these big things called bellows and fire needs air and it pushes air and it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger and Nebuchadnezzar had them get it hotter, seven times hotter than it usually was. So hot that even the men who were bringing Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to the fire to be burned, they even died. So the fire was going crazy, absolutely burning up. And they bring, they tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they bring them to the fiery furnace, and they throw them in. All of a sudden, King Nebuchadnezzar gets a little bit afraid. He gets a little bit confused because you know what he says? He said, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? This is what he's saying to his um, soldiers. So he asked him, didn't we cast three guys in there? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. He's saying, did we not put three guys into there? And they're like, yeah, we did. And then he's seeing that there's actually four men in there and they're not tied up anymore. They're free and they're walking around. You know what happened, boys and girls? God came and he saved them. So Nebuchadnezzar runs up to the fire, not too close because he would have gotten burned. And he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. And they do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out and guess what? They're completely fine. There's not a bit of fire on them. They're, they don't even smell like smoke. And you know if you've ever sat beside a fire that you will smell like smoke. Your clothes, your hair, everything. They didn't even smell like smoke. That's how much God had protected them. All of a sudden, King Nebuchadnezzar realized who God was. And he started to worship God. And he said, you know what? No one else saves like your God saves. And he made a decree, he made a new law for all his people that said, anyone who says anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be punished. No one saves like their God does. And we know this is true. We know this is our God. Only he can save. And he does save. He saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he also saves us. He saves us from our sins. And only he can do that. We also learn from this story 
that God has the power to take us out of really hard situations. But we also know from Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego that if God chooses not to, that he is still good and that he still loves us and cares for us. Because you'll remember before they went in, they said, he can save us, but if he doesn't, we're still not going to do what you ask of us. So we know that to be true as well. I think this is such an incredible story because Jesus has saved us in the same way that he saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus to save us and how his saving work achieved so much more than we could ever hope for. Lord, we just pray that we would be faithful to tell others about this truth and that we'd be faithful to stand uh, up for for what we believe, even if it's at a great cost, because you have the power. You are a mighty God. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, kids. Bye. I'll see you next time.